Welcome to our service. Welcome again to our time in God's house. We listen to the words of scripture. We're going to pray. We're going to think about God and recommit ourselves to his love and his service. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second commandment is this, You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. As we celebrate, to celebrate the mystery of God's love, revealed in word and sacrament, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today the day of thanksgiving for the institution of Holy Communion, otherwise known as Corpus Christi, Body of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread that came from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread that came from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I live in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Sometimes this is the Gospel the of the Lord. Large, Thanks be to God. Sometimes the seeds are really small. Sometimes you can work out what a thing is going to be from its seed. Sometimes you can't. Let's look at a few seeds. Can you see that seed there? It's almost microscopic, so small that you really can't see it. The best way to work out what that seed is going to become is you take that seed, you plant it in some soil, pack it down, nice and firm, a bit of water, a bit of sunshine, and then see what it grows up to be. And this is what it grows up to be. It grows up to be a nice, big, fat carrot. Only a carrot seed is going to grow up to become a carrot. I grew this last week. This carrot started as a carrot seed. It couldn't have come from anything else. Let's look for another seed. Look at that seed, almost microscopic. What happens when I take that seed and grow it? Pack it into the soil, pat it down. Bit of water, bit of light, bit of warmth. And it grows up to become, to become a large, juicy onion. I could have that for my tea. An onion grows from an onion seed. You're not going to get an onion from a carrot seed. You're not going to get a carrot from an onion seed. One seed leads to a respective plant. Fruit, goodness, food. Or then again, my strawberry. You're not going to get a strawberry from an onion seed. You're not going to get an onion from a carrot seed. You're not going to get a carrot from a strawberry seed. The seed leads to the fruit. Today we're thinking of a different sort of seed and a different sort of fruit. Today we're thinking about Holy Communion, Jesus giving us himself in the form of bread and wine. If we reverently take bread and prayerfully take that wine, take them reverently, with prayer, beforehand, preparing our soul to meet with that special sort of seed. That seed, when it grows up in the soil of our soul, when it grows, it's not going to become a carrot, not going to become an onion. No, it grows into Christ-likeness in us. The seed of Christ, we become like him. So every time we take the communion, the bread or the wine, every single time, if we prepare, we're putting a seed of Christ into ourselves. We water it. We pack it down. We give it warmth from God, our Father. And then watch it grow and grow, mature into real fruit. Christ likeness. We now affirm our faith using the words of the Creed. We believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? 
who believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To the bidding, in faith we pray, please respond, we pray to you, our God. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people gathered at your table. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Here, where we celebrate how Christ gave us his body, to be our spiritual food. Listen as we pray for his body, the church, spread throughout the world. <clears throat> and we pray for the church across the world where it is persecuted. In India, in Pakistan, in the Middle East, in countries in Asia, wherever God's people, the people who follow the way of Christ, are oppressed. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Here, where we recognise the presence of Christ, who takes away the sin of the world, listen as we pray for the world and for its peoples for whom his blood was shed. And we pray for places where there is bloodshed, where there's war, conflict, where violence brings suffering. And we pray for the governments of this world at this time. We pray that they will come together to bring an end to the crisis. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. Here where we come together as Christ gathered with his friends to give us this meal of holy fellowship. Listen as we pray for all whom you have given us. Our friends and all whose lives are joined with ours. And so we pray for our friends, our families, colleagues at work, 
brothers and sisters at church, businesses and schools in our areas, our neighbours. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Here, where we remember the night of Christ's agony and trial, listen as we pray for all who share his sufferings through fear or pain or worry or distress of many kinds. And we bring before God those we know who are sick in body, mind or spirit at this time, those named on our parish sick lists, those known to us at home, those with nobody to pray for them, known only to God. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Here, where we join our praises with the whole company of heaven, listen as we pray for all who have trusted Christ's promise to raise up on the last day those who eat his flesh and drink his blood. So we pray for those who have died, those known to us, those who have died of COVID-19, those whose years mind occurs at this time, and we pray for all those who mourn. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Lord, satisfy our hunger with food that lasts, the bread of God, which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in peace and love, and raise you up at the last day. On the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you all. for joining us today during our time of worship. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope like a seed in good soil, it's going to grow a hundredfold into real godly fruit. However you're feeling, whatever you're going through at the moment, please be aware that we're praying for you. And if you can, please pray for us as well.